As somebody who has taught TypeScript to thousands of people online, but also in person, where I can see the, the looks of fear and confusion on my students' faces, there's one topic in particular that I've noticed tends to trip people up. That topic is generics. Generics are a bit of a roadblock when you're starting out, for some people at least. People are cruising along, feeling good, learning about function type annotations, things like this. Okay, here's a function called double. It accepts n as a parameter, which is of type number, and it returns something of type number. Or this function accepts a single parameter of type array of strings, and it returns a Boolean. All pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of syntax you have to get used to, but it's not too bad conceptually. But then, just as people are feeling good, we see things like this. These function definitions here, what is going on? The letter T everywhere, angle brackets, T and U. Uh, we don't see string or number or Boolean or any of the basic types that I had been showing students. These are examples of generic functions and they are confusing when you're starting out. So what are generics? Generics are a way of defining basically variables for types and making our functions more flexible. We also have generic classes, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but the concept is the same. We'll be working with multiple types instead of limiting ourselves to a single type. We can uh, be a lot more flexible in the way that we write our functions. The downside, of course, is that the syntax is a little rough when you're getting started, but these are everywhere in TypeScript, so you can't avoid them. All right, so let's take a step back and cover what is probably the simplest generic, a classic example, the identity function. You provide some value, whatever that is, it could be anything, and we want to return that same value. So something like this, return val. It accepts a single parameter, we return that single parameter. So if I were to call identity on one, let's call this result, I would expect result to have a number in it. But we don't see that expressed here. I can provide anything, right? I could do result two is a string we would expect result2 to be of type string, but TypeScript doesn't know that. All that it knows is that our value is of any type, and the return value is also of any type. But really what I want to say is, you could pass any type in, but whatever type you pass in will also be returned. That way TypeScript would know, all right, this is a number, so result is a number. This is a string, result2 should be a string but we're not expressing that relationship. So the, the function will behave the same, but as far as TypeScript is concerned, the typing is completely different. Now I could limit myself and say, you can only provide a string. And then of course, TypeScript will know that the result is a string. But then when I provide a number, we get an error. So that's not gonna work. So what are my options here? I guess I could say string or number, but then the return type is going to be string or number. So that's not what I want. What I wanna do here is write a generic. Now I'm gonna show you the syntax first. Don't be intimidated. Just take a look at this here. And remember that the generic syntax is like a variable for a type. So what I'm telling TypeScript here is that this identity function is going to accept a value of some type T. It doesn't have to be T by the way, you could call this type. And I think that's often easier when you're starting out. T is what you'll see because it's short, it's idiomatic. It's like uh, when we do a for loop, right? For let i equal zero. It doesn't have to be i. You could write out index or something else, but i is what is most common in the real world. Same thing here, t is most common. So now this identity function accepts some value of some type, but there's a relationship here. It's not just anything that is returned, it is something of that same type. So now that we've expressed this relationship, TypeScript knows that when you provide this argument here, we're gonna get something of that type back. So result actually is of type one, it's a literal type right now. ASDS is the literal type that we get here. But let me show you another example of a generic. Let's write something maybe slightly more useful. Let's say we were going to write a generic function to pick a random element from an array. We'll call it sample. Sample expects an array and it's gonna return one element from that array. So this array could be an array of anything, but let's just say for now, it's type any. And uh, well, I guess we'll say any array, just to be a little stricter. Okay, so we'll pick a random element, or a random index rather, from our array that's passed in, and then we'll return the element 
at that index, just like that. But take a look at our return type annotation by default. It's just going to be any type because this will work with any array. If I were to call sample with the array one, two, three, we know that we should get a number back because it's an array of numbers. But if we look at what TypeScript knows, it just says that could be anything. And that relationship is uh, very, very broad and not very helpful in the world of TypeScript. We want things to be really specific, as specific as possible. And so we know for sure, whatever value we get back, it's going to be of the type that this array is. So if this is an array of strings, we get back a string. If this is an array of numbers, we get back a number. So we can use a generic to express this. So we would tell TypeScript, this is going to be a generic function. We'll have some type that we work with, type T. Again, could call it anything, but T is common. And this array will be an array of T. And the return type will be a single T. So when we call this with sample one, two, three, that array, we're talking about an array of numbers. TypeScript can infer. I don't even have to say anything fancy. It can infer that we're working with an array of numbers, meaning it returns a number. And if I look at val, it tells us, okay, this returns a number. If I change this to be an array of Booleans, true, false, it knows it returns a Boolean. So I don't have to say what T is, at least most of the time. Um, if you ever need to specify what T is, you can actually do it when you call the function just like this. I'm saying I'm calling the sample function where the T type is Boolean and here is my argument. But in this situation and in many situations, TypeScript can infer the types of your generics. So here I have an array of Booleans. That's what this T array represents, meaning T is Boolean. Or if I have strings, D-I-E, die. Uh, we see that we get back a single string. So we're not limited to just one type, right? I could have a union type here. In that case, we're going to get back a string or a number. We don't know which, it's random, but we're going to get something of that type, string or number. So this is a slightly more complicated generic. Um, I just want to remind you, this can be called anything. T is common, but you could replace it with type if it helps you visualize what's happening. We're saying we accept an array of some type and we return something of that type. So this is just a quick intro to generics. There's a lot more that we could cover. We can specify default types. We can actually have multiple types that we use in a single function. We can use generics with classes. We can add constraints. So we could say instead of any old type, right now could, T could be anything, we could say that it actually has to extend some interface that we don't have defined yet. It must include some property, it must include some method or something like that. But we're keeping it simple because this is complex enough when you're starting out. So if you are feeling confused, well, I maybe did a terrible job, but also even if I did an okay job teaching, uh, it is a confusing topic and it's very natural to take a little while for this to click. Just take your time and try and walk through this. And remember, you can replace T with whatever you want. Put the word type there, think of it as a variable that will be replaced with string or number or some union type down the line. If you enjoyed the video and want to keep learning TypeScript, there's a coupon to my new TypeScript course in the description. Otherwise, uh, I hope you still enjoyed it and uh, I'll be back with some new videos next week. Have a good week.